Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and I'm here today at the Rock Island Auction Company, where we are taking a look at a prototype Ishapur Arsenal Jungle Carbine. Now the, the Jungle Carbine that actually got adopted was a modification of the number 4 rifle, as was being manufactured in the UK and in Canada, and in the United States actually. However, there were two major British Commonwealth nations that didn't actually ever start making the number 4 rifle. Those were Australia and India. And coincidentally, those were also the two places kind of most able to exploit a shortened and lightened rifle for jungle warfare. So in during World War II, the program started to come up with a, a jungle carbine type rifle for specifically Australia and India. In fact, it was primarily for India. Uh, and they basically took number one Mark III rifles, cut them down, and refitted them a bit. And this program began in 1943, and what we have here is the first version of what the Ishapur Arsenal put together as their prototype of the jungle carbine. So let's take a look, because it's got a weird sight, plus some other stuff going on. Since this is an Enfield, we will start with a look at the markings on the receiver socket. We have a crown crest, a GRI, King George, the Emperor of India at the time. Uh, 1943 dated rifle, which makes sense. Uh, Ishapur would have taken a new rifle off the assembly line to do this sort of experimental conversion on, and that would have said number one Mark III star, and three seems to have worn off. So there are three or four major things that they did to develop this rifle, and the first is really the simplest. They shortened the barrel. So this ended up with a 16 and a half inch barrel, 19.3 uh, inches if you include the threaded on flash hider. Uh, that flash hider was considered important because 303 British ammunition out of a barrel this long left a uh, quite a bit of flash, and they wanted to tame that down. Uh, this flash hider apparently was not found to be quite as effective as the British number 5 pattern one. They, uh, in the process I should say, they also lightened the rifle by about a pound and a quarter. Um, the British were doing some similar stuff. The British rifle was about half a pound less than this. This came in at seven and a half pounds. It probably remained uh, a little heavier than the British pattern, because Ishapur kept the nose cap off of the original number 1 rifle. And that makes sense for a couple of reasons. Primarily it means that they get the bayonet lug without having to do any sort of redesign. That's just, you know, the original bayonet will still fit on the rifle, and that's a nice bonus. As well, of course, as having your front sight there, good sturdy front sight protector wings, and that sort of stuff. Now they also added, well they reconfigured the sling swivels. So the front sling swivel is actually on the right side of the action, and the rear sling swivel was put on the top of the stock. This was a popular thing. Uh, for British and Commonwealth troops. You'll see things like Owen guns with sling swivels on top, as well as um, other patterns of gun. The, the British, British actually reconfigured Thompson guns to put sling swivels on the top of the stock like that. They just It gave them a more comfortable carrying method. Then the really unusual bit, the most distinctive bit I think about this, is the, the change in the rear sight to the sort of flag style of sight. You've got three separate pieces here. This top piece, this top turret, is spring-loaded, and there's a little detent, or two little detents in it. So we can rotate that, and it'll lift up and then snap into place. Uh, you can actually snap it in place when all four 90-degree positions, whether there's actually a sight there or not. You have three aperture holes here. Let's see, that's the side you would be looking through. Uh, those are of varying height, so you have a 200, a 400, and a 600 meter sight. And I'm pretty sure with a gun like this, in a jungle environment, you'd pretty much always be using the 200 meter type. This, of course, required a bit of change to the front handguard, which no longer had to uh, accommodate a rear sight out there on the, the back of the barrel. In every other way, the receiver remained uh, the same. It still has the same magazine, 10 round capacity, 303 British caliber. Uh, stripper clip guide is there intact, and the, the bolt itself didn't change at all. So after some testing in 1944, which compared this, the Ishapur uh, rifle, against a British pattern of shortened and lightened number one. Um, the Brits came back and suggested some rifle number five parts to Ishapur. They sent some of those parts over, thinking that they would integrate well into this design. Specifically things like the flash hider, uh, and also the butt plate with a, a rubber 
uh, rubber recoil pad on it. Uh, it appears that Ishapur integrated those parts, came up with a newer pattern of jungle carbine short rifle, and that pattern was actually tentatively approved for production as the Rifle No. 6 Mark I in September of 1944. Before they could actually make any, it was cancelled. And then, interestingly, the No. 6 Mark I was reapproved in September of 1945, but the version that was reapproved then was actually the Australian version. So I do have a video on some of the Australian No. 6 Mark I prototypes, so if you're interested in this sort of development, definitely take a look at that one as well. Uh, but the Australian No. 6, uh, they produced, I think, I think 200 total, and then it was cancelled as well. It was deemed to be obsolete and shut down. So neither the Ishapur version nor the Lithgow, the Australian version, ever actually got into any sort of real production. And that leaves us with just a handful of really cool prototypes. Now there are some rifles out there that are, depending on the honesty of the seller, purported to be prototypes. Um, they are Navy Arms guns, and they're basically Ishapur No. 2 and No. 2A1 rifles that are cut down into this sort of length. But those have been cut down as a commercial thing relatively recently, and are not really the same as the original Ishapur prototypes. So, if you would like to add this particular real one to your own collection, it's of course coming up for sale here at Rock Island. Take a look at the description text below. You'll find a link to Forgotten Weapons, and from Forgotten Weapons you can link over to Rock Island's catalog page on this rifle. Take a look at their pictures, at their description, and uh, their value estimate, and all that sort of stuff. Thanks for watching.